this is uh, Miss Jo, and I'm so glad to be here to celebrate our World Language Week. And I'm teaching Chinese, and uh, since 2016, I am so fortunate to work here. And uh, this year is my third year of teaching Chinese. Right now, I really like to see the world language is really help myself as well. Before I came into this country, I do not speak any English, but I think the environment is provide the learning uh, opportunity for me. And so right now, I'm doing my master's thesis and uh, doing my research with my students. And I want to show you a little bit about this. And it's called the brush marker and the pencil stage. And which is using the space memory theory. And I want to show you. And the kids is using this writing pen with the brush with the clean water. And all those is the stroke order. They can do one by one. Now after they finish this, then they are jump to the next page. And here is the the character. For example, if they are or they learn the stroke order, they can use that scale to practice their Chinese words. And the beauty is like this homework, the kids use the Chinese brush, then also they use, after that they also use the marker, and after that they are using their pencil. So like this, they are writing their pencil writing their Chinese by the pencil. So I think uh, the World Language Week is going to promote this activities. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Noel Delgado, or the students call me uh, Dr. D. Um, and my background is uh, I was born from two Cuban parents who came to the United States. And when I was young, uh, obviously they spoke in Spanish. And so I became fluent in Spanish, and I learned the importance of being bilingual um, when I lived in uh, California for a while, and I studied there. Um, and even living in New Jersey, there's a lot of opportunities where you can use a second language. Um, for instance, I volunteer in several um, different um, churches that work with the homeless, and there are many times that uh, I'm the only bilingual person there, so I'm used as a translator back and forth. It also looks great when you apply for uh, different jobs to be bilingual or trilingual and being able to communicate and have and have different thought processes that might be um, definitely beneficial, beneficial for the business world. Hello, my name is Dr. Dorothy Sobieski. I'm the department chair for performing arts at Rani School and I teach orchestra. I'm the orchestra director for grades 3 through 12. I'm originally from Warsaw, Poland. I grew up in Warsaw, I speak fluent Polish, I also learned to speak Russian, English, and I have some understanding and experience with German and Italian. Uczmy się obcych języków i bądźmy bardzo dumni z naszego, z naszych korzeni, z naszego pochodzenia. I feel it's very important that we learn foreign languages. I personally feel in my life it helped me really get a better understanding and appreciation for people around me, to understand them, to appreciate where they are coming from, and to um, help me get to know them. You know, with, in my classes in school or anywhere I am, music is one of those also foreign languages that brings us all together. And Hi, I'm Maura Soriel. I'm the Upper School Learning Specialist here at Rani School. I speak and understand colloquial Egyptian Arabic, which is a dialect of the Arabic language. And though I can't read or write, I have found speaking and understanding the language to be useful on so many levels. When I was growing up to immigrant parents, I was able to translate and advocate for various services, legally, uh, through the medical field, um, and otherwise, socially. When I lived in New York, um, I served as a school counselor both in Queens, New York, as well as in the Bronx. There were Arabic-speaking families in both uh, of those settings, and I was able to help families advocate the education system and really seek services that their children were eligible for, but didn't have the language skills to advocate for themselves. Uh, today, I find that even in casual settings, uh, I'm able to help translate or 
uh, support families um, and individuals. And, and it's really beautiful how knowing a language is not just about translating the words, but it's about the culture as well and, and really helping people feel comfortable within their own cultural uh, worldview about what it is they're trying to either understand or communicate to others. Um, so I'm very grateful. I do hope one day I could read and write, but certainly having uh, the language uh, available to me and hopefully to the next generation will be able to help serve, um, serve people in whatever setting that, that we're in. Hi, I'm Maria Lacombe from the Accounting Department. So let me start with the facts. The Philippines is an archipelago of over 7,100 islands. Our official language is Tagalog. Over 86% of the population is Roman Catholic. But let me not bore you with cold stats. Let me tell you something more interesting. Manny Pacquiao won his 70th fight last Saturday night. Catriona Gray captured the Miss Universe last month. She's the fourth Filipina to be named Miss Universe. But if sports and beauty pageants are not your thing, maybe I could interest you in pop music. Bruno Mars is half Filipino. But these three people give me bragging rights to my homeland, but they're not what I, what I want to share with you. I want to share with you the character of the typical Filipino. You see, even if the Philippines is a third world country, it is home to a group of happy, caring, and hospitable people. You will often hear them say, Kumain ka na ba? Which means, have you eaten? They will share their last morsel of food with you because you smiled and said hello. This automatically, automatically makes you family. That, along with their impeccable work ethic, make them world-renowned in being nurses and caregivers. And that is why I'm proud to be a Filipina and share the same language as these remarkable people. Maligayang bagong taon, which means Happy New Year to my Rani family. Hello, my name is uh, Mrs. Korkowski. I teach French at Rani School. It's my third year here. I've been a foreign language teacher for 20 years. Um, I speak three languages and I think it's very important to uh, learn another language because for me it has helped me travel the world make connection with other culture. It has also helped me move to other countries like China and the United States. I teach Mandarin classes at Randy for both middle school and upper school. Uh, I come from China. I'm a native speaker of Chinese. To me, English is uh, my second language. I started to learn English from middle school when I was in China. Just like nowadays, my students are learning Chinese here. Speaking both English and Chinese enabled me to study abroad, uh, survive in a foreign country, travel to different places, and help the families who only speak Chinese in my community. Uh, if, you are, if you are learning another language, make sure you keep it. It's going to bring you a lot of benefits than you ever thought. If you are not learning a language, start here now. Thank you. Xie um, Since the Chinese New Year is on the corner, and I want to say, Xin Nian Hao, Wan Shi Ru Yi, Zai Jian. For Sasaida, we shokran gamian. Merci, and a bientôt. The quote today is from the Cuban intellectual and uh, journalist, Jose Martin, and it is, Todos es hermoso y constante, todos es música y razón, y todo como el diamante antes que la luz es carbón. Thank you. 大家好,我是袁老师,新年快乐!